Typography um, in the built environment is uh, a way to visually portray this, the story of a city, its history. We lost um, this relationship between typography, material and architectural space. What we have now is mostly facades, layers of type over things. And that, I think, is a loss because it makes every city look the same. In the Arab world, everything is bilingual simply because most of these cultures either want to be seen as international or they are truly very multicultural societies. So the two scripts represent two very large cultures and they come together anyway. So why not make them come together on a, on a, on a harmonious way? If we're going to do um, an, a research on typography, on a better way of integrating not only two scripts together, but also their role in a society, then we have to come up with something completely new. because we're working on typography for architectural spaces, you had to look for examples of text or typography that is what we call monumental, made for bigger scale, made for being three-dimensional, made for um, designed not with a brush. There are on the teams of 15 people in total, a few that are really specialized type designers that are working in digital typography, but there are also a lot of graphic designers and product designers and architects that never really work with text in that way. You're missing the two oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. three. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. separate the uh -huh. no, Exactly. It's nice to dig into uh, somehow to, to touch the surface of a culture I don't know yet. For me, that's important. It's a personal importance, especially the gestures which are made and, and the, the ethics which are used in the typography are totally different. And it is good to learn from each other. I think the Latin typography can learn a lot from Arabic and the other way around as well. Both start with the calligraphy and both start with writing in the beginning. and. The difference is that the Latin one has been evolved a lot and faster and through time and has been studied more and more. The typefaces that you see are quite developed and studied and structured. Unlike the Arabic one, hasn't developed from the calligraphy, so it's kind of hard to make the uh, Arabic script work as a font. We meet each other. Chinese meets the Japanese meets the English text meets the Arabic. So. How are we going to design our languages if we are in one room all together? We did not have that situation for centuries, but now it is a common thing. And that means that the time designers of, the, of all these roots must reconsider what happens if you start to fuse the kitchen.
Yes. Yes, minty. I don't know, I got over here. We have uh, we've de developed a certain system that you can have split up letters in one language and in the other language. So you have the top and the bottom of one side of the two languages and the other side the reverse. And then they would flip each themselves. So you have the Latin script would go when you look at it from this side to that side, yeah. the way you read it, and the Arabic from that side to that side on the bottom. They will appear together, but they never synchronize okay. because they have a different flow yeah. or a different life or a different rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. They are different cultures. Oh, these are the two halves put together. Yeah. together. Oh, okay. And these are those two halves put together. They're I don't know what it is about the Arabic. Y you know why you can't read it? Mm -hmm. Because by cutting the bottom, yeah, that's what I'm that is essential for the Arabic. Yeah, of they're, they're connected. Now you read them as individual yeah, letters, and Arabic is not read that way. Definitely. But, but here, when you read when you read the bottom, you also can't tell what the top of the letter is. I think it's a new approach uh, to see type and the, the environment and not only on uh, on a flat paper or like uh, 2D uh, designs. So it was interesting to uh, participate in this uh, 3D uh, spatial uh, typographic uh, systems. The process is different uh, being now a 3D uh, prototype process and not only a sketching 2D process. Uh, it gives it a more uh, sensual, hands-on uh, feeling. It was nice to see the sites, like to see uh, where we can put our our work in. The thing is that in the in the Arab world, there's not enough uh, artistic pieces happening in our public spaces. No one will come to ask, like, do for us a, uh, a letter which is like turning in the middle of this plaza, and then only for the sake of people to be happy. Like, no one, no one will do that in, in the Arab nations. Go to the pub. Yeah. Huh? Enough culture. <laughs> We're ready. It's much cleaner and simpler just to add color. Like oh, yeah, you yeah. materialize yeah. with color what is language and you dematerialize what is connection. That's so, it's more abstract. of the project. We are trying to find something like a new freedom in a script uh, system which is based on the idea of Kufi and then again the Latin culture uh, from our countries uh, is not so free but we are going to try to or give it a try to design it so free that the Farsi the structural three-dimensional Farsi which we're going to design and the structural three-dimensional Latin script will meet a kind of on the bridge. If you have the skeleton, which is a three-dimensional set of a lot of three-dimensional little forms in yeah. both Farsi and uh, Latin, you can decide later on how to dress it in a way. Do you want to have it like here? Do you want to have a bold line? Yeah, yeah, do you yeah. want to have a sharp line? Do you want to have it, it. Do, do you want to give it the feel of handwriting? Do you want to, you know? Then if it is very bold thick and you start to play with pink or with childish forms, you can easily express an idea of a simple conversation of two young children in both uh, regions. 